In this analysis video, we're going to take a look at the swing of Tommy Fleetwood. Now, Tommy Fleetwood just shot 63 in the final round of the U.S. Open, another great uh, major performance. This young golfer is one of the elite ball strikers on both the PGA as well as the European Tour, at least over the last couple of years. He uh, is near the top of the stats as far as strokes gained for off the tee as well as approach shots into the green. In this video, we're going to talk about two things you can learn from his game and his approach that help him become such an elite ball striker and what you can apply to your own game in order to improve your ball striking. Tommy does a number of things really well in his swing, and so when analyzing it, it's hard to focus on just one. But we're going to focus mostly on the release pattern, uh, the, the consistent release pattern between his driver and his iron, and what he does differently with his pivot in order to adjust for the different shots. So if I fast forward down to the release, um, in, in our system, uh, we define the release from delivery position. So somewhere right around shaft 45 or kind of right about here, all the way through until the arms uh, parallel in the follow through or until the club is parallel in the follow through. So roughly that movement through there. Now, what we'll see that Tommy does so well is he's going to delay the straightening of their arms even though the wrists have started a little bit earlier. So the wrists have started unhinging through here and then they're going to start rotating, um, but we'll see most of the rotation of the forearms happening as the trail arm extends. So basically he gets into this position and then you'll see that through the ball, the majority of the movement is more that right arm extending while the lead forearm is rotating over or supinating. That combination tends to produce very consistent club face control as well as a widening arc. So now if we, if we say that, okay, the good release pattern comes from delaying the straightening of the trail arm and having more rotation of the forearms instead of having a uh, flipping of the wrists, well, what changes between these two shots? So over on the right, we have an iron, um, short iron, and over on the left, we have the driver. If we look at the timing of the arm extension, when we look at the driver, we'll see that he's going to reach pretty much that maximum straightness right around there, where it's gonna be extending more towards the target. And we can see that in this position, which we refer to as follow through position, you've got great alignment between the hip socket and the heel, and then you've got a great alignment between the upper body and the lower body, or basically the rib cage, his shoulders, are well behind where his upper body is. From the uh, face on view with the iron, you'll see that the timing of that trail arm straightening is reaching its maximum somewhere right around here, so a little bit earlier compared to the driver. Um, that's because it's a little bit more of an arm extension down into the ball instead of an arm extension towards the target or through the ball. Now, what we'll see if we get him to about that same position is that his upper body is a lot more on top of his lower body. The ability to maintain a similar release pattern with these different pivots is one of the traits that I saw among the elite ball strikers who were able to uh, lead statistically both driver as well as iron statistics. Now if we look at the impact location, you'll see that even though he's doing a very similar release, you can see that the pretty much the entirety of his upper body is behind the golf ball, where here you can see that the pretty much, I'd say half of his upper body is in front of the golf ball or maybe even a little bit more. That creates some of the different uh, angle of attack as well as um, power sources that tend to work better with the iron compared to the driver. Now quickly from the down the line, you'll see that in order to have such a good release, he's going to have to do some pr things pretty well in transition. So you'll see a very good uh, shallowing of the shaft and you'll see a very good sequencing where the lower body and the core are rotating well before his upper body uh, starts rotating towards the target more down here. 
you'll see that as we get to that start of the release, there's a good relationship where the club shaft is almost at a 90 degree angle to where his pelvis is pointing. So his pelvis is pointing, let's say, 30, 40 degrees over that, and then the club is pointing more out in that direction. So you can see that by having the club more in this shallow position, it allows him to execute the better release pattern that we saw from the face-on view. As he approaches that follow-through position that we like, you can see that the club is slightly outside of the hands, um, the hands are pointing relatively out at the belly button, and through the ball, he's, even though his lower body has lifted from the way he's creating power, you'll see that his chest pretty much maintains about the same height as it rotates through to the follow-through. It's not until it goes past follow-through position and into the finish that the chest or his upper body starts raising up away from the ground. Now I found this great clip of Tommy explaining one of the big pieces of advice he would give to most amateurs um, when it comes to practicing on the range. Instead of just going there and beating balls as hard as you can, half shots. So half shots is chest pretty much through to chest. And the reason, the reason we do this is basically because you have less room for error and it just syncs things up a little bit more. You can feel a bit more connection and you can learn a bit more from it. So The key thing is practicing the 9 to 3 or 10 to 2 or waist height shots is a really good way of refining your release pattern. If you have trouble making solid contact or hitting the ball well from these little 9 to 3 shots, then it's a good sign that you need to work on your release pattern more so than you need to work on your backswing or transition. Now here are two shots from the Masters uh, early in 2018. Um, what you'll see is he's going to pretty much execute the same release pattern, but you'll see that with the long iron on the par five, he's gonna have a full release similar to what he was doing with the driver. That's great for the longer clubs where you want a little bit more shallower path um, and you're gonna have a little bit more uh, body powered um, control of the swing. But what we find with Tommy that I think he does exceptionally well is he has pretty much mastered the art of a near full distance three quarter shot that he hits inside of about 180 yards more times than not. Um, I find that this is one of the traits that uh, really elite iron players on tour uh, tend to do is they tend to be able to shift from making this full cut with the driver and long clubs to a little bit more of the 10 to 2 or 3 quarter punch shot um, with the shorter irons. So if you want to master your ball striking just like Tommy, you need to build a really solid release pattern to use throughout the bag and be able to adjust your body position and pivot depending on the club that you're swinging. If you do that, you'll hit longer and straighter drives as well as hit more uh, close shots with your approach shots into the green. So here's one last great view of a slow motion swing with the driver where you can really see through the ball that the wrists are having more of a rotation or the forearms are having more of a rotation movement as that right arm is extending more at the target. If you master that combination through there, it's very easy to have consistent club face control and a, a long flat spot down at the bottom of the swing that tends to result in better consistency. If you like the detailed way that we break down the golf swing, then you'll love the drills and concept videos over at golfsmartacademy.com. Below I've included a link to a, a list of videos relating to the release so that you can start training your pattern just like Tommy. If you're not quite ready to sign up for a free membership, then please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll be the first to know about it whenever we create new YouTube content like this.